today's video, we're gonna talk about my new dividend portfolio, the stocks that I chose and why, and how I set it up and how I plan to contribute to it going forward. You guys might notice that I'm not in my normal video setup. I'm actually in Breckenridge, Colorado with my family. We're on vacation. And I'm gonna show you all the view that we have real quick from our condo. Pretty sweet. Okay, so first off, why a dividend portfolio? I've been talking about the importance of building passive income streams and additional income streams. And I also talked about how it wasn't something that I focused on when I was in my corporate career. All the personal finance books and blogs all talk about maxing out your retirement accounts for tax efficiency. So that's what I did. I spent years doing that. And it wasn't until I started learning about the power of passive dividend income that it really just changed my perspective. So earlier this year, I opened a brokerage account just to build passive dividend income. So as you guys are hopefully building up your own, I'll be building mine and sharing my progress along the way. If there's like trucks or like trash trucks or something over there making a bunch of noise, hopefully y'all can't hear that, but maybe you can. So let's take a look at where my account's at right now. So as you can see, my account's a little bit over $23,000. Um, I have my accounts at Schwab. Just, I like Schwab in terms of a brokerage. That's what I use. So that's where mine is, but you can have your account wherever works best for you. So if we look at my projected investment income for the next 12 months in this account, you'll see that for the next year, it's a little over $1,500 um, for the whole year, which if you break it down by month, it's a little bit over 130 bucks a month. You know, that's pretty good, at least to start, right? I mean, that probably covers our water and gas bills probably for the year. So, and if you look at it that way, I think it makes it easier to kind of see progress of, okay, which bill am I knocking out with this passive income? Um, and so for us, if you say, hey, our current passive income can pay for our water bill and our gas bill for the whole year, that's pretty good. It's a good place to start. So let's look at the actual stocks that I have in my dividend portfolio and why. So I'm not investing in a dividend ETF or mutual fund. I'm actually investing in individual stocks. That's what I wanted to do. That may not be the right thing for you. But let's take a look at each individual one. So one, SPG. I talked about SPG a few times on the channel already, but it's a stock that I really like. They hold a portfolio of premium retail real estate, like shopping malls. And I know people will say, aren't malls dead? Um, I don't think so. And I think SPG is still going to perform well over the long term uh, because of the quality of their properties. And the stock has been down quite a bit this year. And the combination of the cash flow yield and the current dividend yield is real attractive to me. So, you know, SVG is going to be one that I'm going to continue to buy while it's under $110 and especially when it's under $100. And when you take a look at kind of where I'm at, my cost basis is actually quite a bit higher than it is right now. It's over 106. Um, but I've been continuing to add as it's come down. And in my opinion, SVG under 100 is a great buy. So I'm super excited about that. You can tell I'm on vacation. I haven't groomed. I'm looking a little scruffy. It's vacation, Matt. So SCCO, Copper Company, um, it's a new one that I recently got interested in. I actually tweeted when I initially bought because I like their cash flow. Um, they have a real strong cash flow yield. And I think the concerns about reduced commodity uh, demand and prices because of the lockdowns in China is a temporary thing. I do think commodity prices for copper will continue to rise and go up um, as that demand comes back online. You know, with their 9% to 10% dividend yield, to me, it was just too good to pass up at this point. But I'm betting on the fact that um, that industry is going to continue to see demand and if it does then that dividend yield should hold strong over the long term but we'll see how it goes and then the last one is Berkshire Hathaway so I have two lovely shares of Berkshire Hathaway and you might know this or you might not but Berkshire actually doesn't pay a dividend so why am I holding these shares well I actually bought these shares just so that I would have the option to attend the Berkshire annual shareholders meeting that Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger do every year I thought it would be a cool thing to be able to do at least once I haven't gone before. So I bought these two shares as kind of a placeholder to allow me to go if I want to. And as of right now, I think the plan is that I will go next year in 2023. But in order to get passes for the Berkshire Hathaway shareholders, meaning you need to be a shareholder. Um, so that's why I bought those. And look, the Berkshire Hathaway as a company and as a stock has performed extremely well over the years. So holding any shares of it is not a bad thing, but we all do things for our own reasons that make sense to us. So anyway, so one thing that you might notice in my account is that the dividend reinvestments are turned off. 
I did this because I like to be able to allocate any cash that I get into the best idea I have at the time. And that idea may not be the stock that's giving me dividends. So ideally what I wanna do is always consistently be buying good companies at good prices. And the thing about dividend reinvestment is that it automatically repurchases those shares at whatever price it happens to be that day. And in general, automating your dividend reinvestment isn't a bad thing. I think for most people it actually is really great because it automates that compounding anytime that you get a dividend um, to continue to add more shares to your account. In my case, I just want the choice to be able to put it wherever I think the best value is. So even if you look at what I did back in June, I got an SPG dividend right here for $255. And I actually bought stocks with it. I bought more SPG and I bought one share of Verizon, which I've actually got rid of. But so I'm still buying stocks with that cash. I just want to be able to put them to the stocks that I think are the best value at the time. So that's why I have dividend reinvestment off. And then anytime I get that cash in my account, I go and buy more stocks. Okay, so that's where my account's at today. My goal and my plan is to keep contributing any extra money that we get every single month into that account and growing passive dividend income every single month. So any active income that we create, whether it's my wife's income, my own income from my business or trading that I do, obviously is gonna go to cover all of our monthly bills first. But after we have those taken care of, any extra money is gonna go into this account to continue to build our dividend income. And then number two, the other way that I'm adding money into this account is with credit card rewards. So Schwab and American Express have a relationship to where if you have the Schwab Platinum card, you can actually invest Amex membership rewards points into your Schwab brokerage accounts. So let's say for example, you have a thousand membership reward points. Well, that's worth normally about 10 bucks, but when you transfer it to Schwab, it's transferred at a rate of 1.1. So you actually get $11. Obviously $11, $10 isn't that much difference, but it's a 10% premium on the cash that you already had built up in your membership rewards. And it goes straight into your brokerage account. And for us, this really works because we use a few different Amex cards. And a lot of our spend is in these bonus categories, which allows us to really build up the membership reward points and then transfer it over over into our Schwab brokerage. Obviously the Schwab Platinum card has a pretty high annual fee, so it's not the right choice for everyone, but they do have an alternative card called the Schwab Investor Card, which has no annual fee and gives you one and a half percent cash back on everything. And that cash back automatically gets deposited into your brokerage account every month without you having to do anything. We have both cards and they work well. The point is you're taking, you know, your normal monthly spending, paying bills or whatever you use to pay with your card and automatically putting a piece of that into your long-term income. It's a win-win. In terms of activity on the account, you can see in the history that things happen pretty frequently. You can see my Invest With Rewards cash back from my Schwab Platinum card. I also have the Schwab Investor card like I talked about, and you can see that automatic cash back rewards as well. Last month in June, I actually got SPG dividends back, and you can see that I use those to purchase more SPG shares. So at a minimum, there's activity happening in that account pretty much every week. So my goal with this particular account is to share with you guys step-by-step as I'm building a passive dividend portfolio that eventually can pay all my bills. How long will that take? I don't know, but it's nice to know that as we make progress, our bills are consistently, slowly over time, getting paid by passive income to where we're consistently reducing that risk each time we buy more income. Being out here in Breckridge with the family just reinforces the power and importance of financial independence. The money itself isn't the goal, it's what the money allows you to do that matters. Being able to focus on quality time with my family, while having assets to help cover our expenses is an awesome feeling. So anyway, I'll continue to update you guys on how things are going with this account, how it's building up, hopefully every month, and we'll continue to build our passive income together. So that's all I have for you guys today. If you have any questions about my dividend portfolio or investing in dividend stocks in general, put them down in the comments below. If you guys wanna see more videos on stocks and investing, click on these videos on the end screen, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.